Good afternoon, dear participants of the International Olympiad of Linguistics 2021. Welcome to the first day of uh, the Olympiad taking place online in Ventspils during one of the hottest summers in Latvia in recent years. Welcome to Latvia, the region of Kurzeme and the city of Ventspils in Latvian. Sveicinati Ventspili. Welcome to Ventspils. In today's class, we will get acquainted with the host country, the region and the city. And this class has been possible uh, thanks to the staff, technical staff of Ventspils University of Applied Sciences. And um, uh, today we will also consider various uh, issues that uh, would have been uh, experienced, covered, heard, experienced if we all had a chance to meet here in uh, Latvia, in the city of Ventspils. Uh, because we are also all participants of the International Olympiad of Linguistics, uh, we will also learn a little bit about the Latvian language as well. So, uh, let me start by saying that uh, there are close to 200 countries in the world. So, this is the place where we would all meet if the global pandemic uh, did not happen. So, uh, uh, many of the countries in the world share similarities, differences, traditions, also mentality. So, if you find them similar or dissimilar, then uh, know we share a degree of cultural proximity or even distance, thus making any part of the world a more beautiful place. So, where is Latvia? So, Latvia is as we can see on the map, in the northeastern part of Europe, and it borders on Estonia, Lithuania, Russia, Belarus, and it also has a sea border with Sweden. Latvia is a, an EU member state, and it is participating in the NATO alliance, and it is also a member of numerous international organizations. So, uh, the territory of Latvia was populated as early as the 11th century BC. So, on the left side, I have given some uh, artifacts across different parts of the world to compare what happened all around the world and how all these uh, timelines compare to the events in uh, Latvia. So the first inhabitants in Latvia arrived at around 11,000 BC. And one of the first uh, groups that came to uh, the present-day territory of Latvia were Finno-Ugers, and they established their encampments, their homes, wooden hustle, castles, hill forts later on, and uh, later on, also, they started to build stone buildings. This is just to compare. Yeah? So, um, uh, then, uh, for instance, if we look at the map of Ventspils, not far from here, just on uh, the southern coast of uh, northern Kurzeme, we have uh, one of the oldest uh, encampments near the place, which is called Ujava. And because the place is rich in peat, it has well-preserved artifacts. And uh, the encampment dates back to 3,400 uh, uh, or till uh, 2,300 BC. But uh, we will skip some centuries of uh, uh, changing powers, conflicts, uh, division of the territory, and one of the most important dates in Latvia 
is the 18th of November 1980, when Latvia as, a, as an independent country was finally born. What we see in the photo on the left side, uh, it's one of the rare photos uh, where we can see the actual proclamation of the independence of Latvia in Riga in a building what is now the National Theatre. On the right side, in the Gothic script, the spelling of the day, the interim president addressed citizens of Latvia uh, by stating that from now on, Latvia has been united in its ethnographic borders, namely Kurzeme, Vidzeme and Latgale. Kurzeme in the western part of Latvia, Vidzeme, central part of Latvia and Latgale, eastern part of Latvia. So, uh, further on, we will have some insights into Latvia, what it means to people who live here, to visitors who have been to Latvia. And uh, they are, first of all, I'd like to start with colors. And today we will uh, refer to colors quite often because colors are very important in Latvia. And uh, because of the four seasons, uh, with different shades uh, we, and different temperatures, uh, Latvians experience a variety of seasonal hues, tints, colors. So we have winter, which in English means, uh, which in Latvian means ziema. Then we have the season of autumn, when we have yellow leaves, uh, rain, and in Latvian, the season is uh, referred to as rudens. We have uh, the green summer, the countryside, everything is green. And spring, when the first flowers appear amidst uh, heaps of snow, signaling that soon the change is to happen. So, and uh, because actually, um, I would say, the, uh, these four seasons, uh, Latvians normally find that summer in Latvia is actually so good. It's so good because we have everything. We grow grapes, we sit in outside cafes, we have local vegetation, we have imported vegetation like palm trees. But winter is also good. It is white, it is cold, it is very different. And uh, uh, so, um, uh, here we can see uh, uh, actually uh, four pictures which are uh, taken very uh, close and near uh, Ventspils and uh, the picture where you can see uh, a typical winter is just outside the university uh, or where the uh, online Olympiad takes uh, place. So, if we continue about the colors of uh, Latvia, what are the favorite colors here? Uh, actually, the study was recently conducted by uh, the Samsung company, and they established that Latvians typically prefer blue. And uh, so we can imagine why, because the color blue is closely associated with the sea, which has also different colors, rivers, lakes. Uh, we have also the color green uh, in abundance, which uh, symbolizes uh, forests, meadows. Uh, we have different shades of blue, violet, pink, which uh, symbolize also the dramatic uh, skyline um, and so on. Uh, then, um, uh, actually, uh, had most of you uh, had the chance to be here in Ventspils, your journey would start typically to the city of Ventspils from the capital of Latvia, Riga. So, as you see, uh, uh, it, it is quite a fast route way. It's uh, only like two hours and some minutes uh, by car or maybe three hours uh, by bus. So, and uh, 
you can already guess from uh, the map you see that uh, here you practically cover already half of the country. So it's uh, not a big country, but it has a has lots of diversity yeah, in terms of uh, flora, fauna, um, uh, culture, architecture, arts, and so on. So, uh, as you would, uh, first of all, land in Riga, all of you would land in Riga. Uh, so, it is our capital, which is located in a very convenient place, in the very center of uh, uh, Latvia. So, and uh, the capital of Riga, as we can see in the first picture, is divided uh, in two parts by River Daugava. And on the right side, where you can see the big ferry, we have um, the old Riga. And uh, the airport is just across the cable bridge. Riga is uh, rich also in architectural diversity, notably in Art Nouveau architecture. Um, this is a Blackfriars house just opposite uh, Riga City Council. Uh, the Monument of Freedom, and uh, what people love about Riga, these are all the small cafes, all the shops, uh, all, all the atmosphere that um, visitors of the uh, uh, city can enjoy. So, but uh, speaking about, um, or continuing rather, about the age of the cities, so uh, Riga is not necessarily the oldest, it is an old city, but um, if you look uh, just right in the center, we have the capital of Riga, uh, which uh, was officially founded in 1201. Uh, Riga has its uh, own flag, coat of arms. It's uh, one, of, one, of, one of its symbols is the monument of freedom. On the left side, we see what is uh, presumably the oldest uh, town in Latvia, which is just on the eastern side of Latvia, not far from the border of Russia. So uh, it, uh, it's uh, uh, also one of its, uh, so to say, uh, highlights is uh, the old uh, Ludza castle, which is now in ruins, but it is used also as a place for concerts and different festivals. And Ventspils. Ventspils was first mentioned in, its, in the historical documents in 1290. Ventspils also has its own flag, coat of arms, uh, and you can see its location just on the coast of the Baltic Sea. And uh, also one of the central objects, yeah, historical objects, is the Livonian uh, castle, which probably those participants who are uh, right now in uh, Ventspils uh, have a chance also to visit. Uh, so, uh, because the history of Latvia also uh, started uh, long ago, uh, there are many uh, places to see and experience. And uh, uh, Latvia has around 140 medieval castles. Some are unfortunately in ruins, some renovated. We have also around 1,800 manor estates. So here I just uh, uh, wanted to show four examples uh, from different parts of Latvia, like Bauska Castle. Yeah? And here we have a castle in Cesis. Turaida Castle and a fully renovated and uh, digitally also interactive Ventspils Livonian Castle. So uh, these castles are very beautiful, yeah, and many tourists just uh, come to Latvia to visit them, to see them, to stay there, to experience their charm. And they have uh, very richly decorated interiors. Uh, also different uh, events can be organized there you know, and, and, and so on. Uh, but probably one of the best uh, known palaces for visitors, it is Rundale uh, Palace. You know? And um, 
So as uh, we can see, it is all also being uh, uh, now um, reconstructed and it, it gives this uh, sense of historic flavor. Huh? So it's a little bit a distance from uh, Ventspils, uh, but uh, currently also you can see that it has a very beautiful garden and um, uh, the interior uh, and uh, the exterior, uh, so it's very monumental. So uh, definitely worth being there if you happen to be in uh, Latvia. So uh, what else is uh, important to say? Uh, uh, Latvia is not, I would say, a culturally uniform country or state. Uh, so as you can see, uh, we have these uh, uh, five distinct uh, regions and Ventspils uh, is uh, located in a very interesting location uh, that uh, on the one hand it is in Kurzeme Peninsula because on the left side here we have the Baltic Sea, on the right side we have the Gulf of Riga, yeah? but Ventspils is just on the coast of the Baltic Sea. Uh, historically it was also known as Kurland. Kurland, there was a duchy of Kurland, yeah, but uh, now it is uh, the cultural and historical region uh, named Kurzeme. Yeah? Then the green one is Zemgale and Vidzeme, yeah, that is where Riga is and many, many other uh, important towns and cities uh, are located. That is Vidzeme. Yeah? So then we have Selia and Latgala in the eastern part of Latvia. Yeah? And uh, each of these uh, uh, regions uh, have their own peculiar uh, culture, traditions uh, that we will also mention a little bit later. And it's important to also to mention that uh, all, every region also has a very distinct national costume. Actually, we have uh, dozens and dozens of different national costumes representing villages, smaller locations. Yeah? And um, here you can just see some of the examples. And uh, whenever there is a, a very important uh, uh, event, festival, uh, national holiday, many families yeah, also try to wear those uh, costumes and participate uh, in various uh, activities. Yeah? Uh, so, and uh, yes, we would say that they are actually also part of uh, the identity because every element uh, is symbolic, every ornament is symbolic, the colors are also symbolic. Yeah? And um, uh, that is an interesting uh, topic already per se to discuss all the, the details. So, um, uh, next, uh, I would like to highlight some fun facts about Latvia, which are actually real, so that we know what is maybe unique, interesting, a little bit different, or maybe just very similar to other countries. Uh, it may seem that people of Latvia sometimes love nature more than urban la landscapes. Uh, partly, I would say that is true even in the global 21st century. Uh, I would say Latvia is indeed among the greenest countries in the world. So, just to give you some figures and numbers, it is estimated that there are about 700 million trees uh, per population of roughly 2 million inhabitants. So, 700 million trees uh, per population of roughly 2 million inhabitants. So, uh, besides, besides, if we speak about the inhabitants of Latvia, so all the inhabitants of Latvia, and we know the population is uh, roughly about uh, 2 million people, so might not seem uh, like a very big country. In, in, in some countries, 2 million would be like one city, but here it's one country. So all the inhabitants of Latvia could actually occupy a square of 40 hectares. I'm just reminding that one hectare, it's about 100 square meters, standing closely next to each other upright. For the comparison, the area of old Riga, 
is 94 hectares. So two old Rigas, people standing next to each other upright, yeah, that is uh, the population of Latvia in terms of the numbers. So I would say there's uh, plenty of space in Latvia for everyone. So um, then um, uh, uh, what else? Latvia has a huge number of rivers, smaller and larger. The total length of rivers is 38,400 kilometers. For the comparison, the circumference of the equator is 40,000 kilometers. So the total length of waterways in Latvia it's 38,400 kilometers. So there are about 12.5 thousand rivers and 3,195 lakes. So for that reason, Latvian people love to go fishing, boating, swimming, because water is plenty and everywhere. And we care very much that it stays clean and it can be used for generations to come. Uh, what's interesting that prior uh, to the fact when Latvia introduced uh, the euro, the national currency we had before euro reflected accurately the Latvian countryside. So here you can just see the currency we were using just before uh, the euro. Yeah? So um, it is 10 lats yeah? and here 5 lats, here we see an oak tree. And here we see the river Daugava continued um, by the banknote. Um, so this is just uh, uh, one fun fact. So um, we continue speaking about the currency. Um, uh, actually, it is interesting to note that the city of Ventspils, uh, where the Olympiad takes uh, place online this year, uh, has its own currency which can be used as a means of payment. Yeah? So uh, you can use it as a means of payment uh, when you want, uh, let's say, uh, uh, to attend different forms of entertainment. Uh, you can use them in uh, tourist attractions uh, across uh, cafes in Ventspils. And uh, the name of uh, the currency reflects the name of Ventspils or, or the river Venta, yeah, Venti. Uh, so 100 vant, it's one euro. Yeah? So, and uh, you can legitimately use in very, very many places across uh, vent spills. So, uh, then, uh, uh, so here we see two uh, people uh, holding hands with each other. It's also an interesting numerical fact that if all the inhabitants of Latvia held hands with each other, that would stretch from Riga, the capital, to Gibraltar. Uh, well, so uh, we would, the population of Latvia would actually yeah, cross uh, uh, the whole of Europe. Um, so uh, another interesting fact is that Latvia has the widest waterfall in Europe widest waterfall in Europe it is Vantas Rumba uh, and its width is 249 meters. Yeah, it depends on the season, yeah, so, uh, but uh, that's uh, kind of the, uh, on the average uh, number. It is not the highest, yeah, but the widest. Yeah? So um, then another interesting uh, thing about Riga, yeah, so Riga has one of the biggest central markets uh, among the Baltic states uh, because its area is 72,000 square meters. <clears throat> All these pavilions formerly housed zeppelins, yeah? but now these are huge buildings of an architectural and historical significance yeah? where different kinds of uh, products are being sold, purchased, yeah, and so on. Yeah. Uh, and because of its uh, peculiar history, yeah, so uh, 
uh, Riga Central Market uh, has also been included in the UNESCO uh, heritage. So, another interesting uh, fact is that Ventspils recently, that is like some, some years ago, I would say, set a new Guinness World Record. In uh, honor of Latvia's 100th anniversary, uh, most people planted most snowdrops. So these flowers are called snowdrops. So most people planted most snowdrops simultaneously. So, and this fact was recognized by the Guinness World Record. Yeah? So uh, it was established in 2017. Yeah? So uh, now we will look a little bit uh, closer to the Latvian language. So the official language of Latvia is Latvian. So uh, because we are members of the um, uh, International Linguistics Olympiad, so it's worth just paying attention to some of uh, the uh, linguistic facts. So first, what we uh, see on the slide, that is the Latvian uh, alphabet. So you might see some uh, seemingly unfamiliar letters, but let me explain what they mean. Yeah? Particularly, you see like uh, somebody might think that we have like two A's. Yeah? Uh, first of all, uh, the mark. Yeah? So it's easy to remember this diacritical mark, which is above the letter A, which we pronounce A. This is short A. Yeah? So these marks indicate uh, long vowels. So you would pronounce this as A, long A. Yeah? So then we come to the next diacritical mark. We have C in English. In Latvian, it is C like in pizza, yeah, C. and if you put a hatchet on the letter C, you pronounce it as ch, ch, yeah, like in English ch, yeah, so, so then we recognize already if this is a, then this should be a, yeah, and also we have ga, and this is the palatal consonant d, it's not j, it's d, it's softer than j, yeah, d, yeah. Uh, then we have also k, ka, and this is also a palatal consonant t, yeah, uh, l, yeah, esh, j, yeah. So, and here, of course, like any other language, we also have some tongue twisters. So, uh, I will try to pronounce them, and then you can also try to pronounce them and see, uh, whether uh, Latvian seems easy or difficult. I myself would not say that it's uh, the easiest language in the world. However, uh, with uh, enough practice and training, uh, one can master it pretty well. So the first word, so we see here, it's not exactly k, so it should be pronounced as t. So it's tiedelis, tiedelis. The difficulty for some people might be t and d. It's not exactly uh, chia jealous. That would be wrong. It is chia jealous, yeah? So it means a brick, a brick, yeah? Another uh, linguistic challenge would be schausliežu dzelstselš, yeah? Sh, z, l, sh, schausliežu dzelstselš, which means narrow gauge railway. Or we can make it even longer. Šis žagaru saištis, kas nolikt šķērsām. Šis žagaru saištis, kas nolikt šķērsām. So it's uh, these... Uh, words are uh, good to practice uh, Latvian pronunciation. Yeah? So, and uh, probably another difficulty, but also an interesting fact is that Latvian also makes use, or I would say standard Latvian makes use of three intonations, the falling, the broken, and the prolonged intonation. And sometimes the spelling of the words may seem the same, but it's just the intonation which differentiates uh, one meaning from another. So we have uh, yeah, and we have luoks. So you can see luoks, luoks, yeah? So it's kind of prolonged. Then we have zale, zale, it's long, and zale, which is the broken intonation, zale, ah, ah, yeah? So zale, zale, so, uh, and, um, 
Yeah, so that might be a little bit difficult. Yeah, in in some sub dialects, you even have the fourth intonation, the rising intonation, but that's already a different story. Yeah? Okay, but if you happen to have uh, sometimes problems with uh, Latvian or want to know what that means, so you are welcome to use uh, hugo.lv, h u g o dot l v. So and um, so here you will get some uh, translation. Of course, we all know that uh, 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 all translations uh, done by the uh, programs machines should be edited. Uh, uh, but um, so at least uh, as to this one, it got it very right. Yeah. So welcome to Latvia, Ventspil, Slipni Luk to Latvia, Ventspili. Okay, uh, so uh, next I have chosen four letters uh, which symbolize either our traditions or mentality. So let me start with this letter Ch. Yeah. In Latvian we have the word chuksts, which means whisper in English. Chuksts. Why is this word important? What does it say about the mentality of Latvian people? Because in Latvia silence is often deemed better than unnecessary drama. In Latvian forests whisper, the sea whispers, flowers whisper, time whispers, also precious amber whispers. So we use uh, this word and implement it in our everyday interaction quite a lot. So we whisper, chuksts. Yeah? That is letter number one to characterize some uh, part of Latvian mentality. Of course, I'm not saying that we don't have extrovert and loud people. Of course, we do. Yeah? But this is so typically also Latvian, I think. So um, then the next letter that is very important is L. Letter L. Yeah? And um, so what do we have here? Yeah? So we see the word which practically is untranslatable in uh, any of the languages, at least I know, Ligua. Yeah? But you have already heard today in the opening ceremony uh, the song where they chanted Ligua, Ligua. Yeah? So, and we use this chanting or word of chanting during the midsummer solstice celebration. We use it quite a lot. So if you are uh, uh, in uh, Latvia in uh, June, particularly around uh, the tw 22, 23, 24, so you will hear this ligua uh, very often, uh, for instance, in Latvian, Nats nagdama jāņu diena ligua ligua. Yeah? So, uh, and here we have uh, like a quote by a British writer, Mike Collier, who wrote the book Up the Baltic. And when he was observing this uh, national celebration, he uh, said that uh, it is an absorbing and affecting sight, unlike any celebration I have seen elsewhere. And remember that I have seen the whirling dervishes, the flame rites of the Zoroastrians, the costume Spanish processions known as fiestas. Yet this is the finest of them all, combining ancestral songs with country dance and a strange combination of formality and informality that I'm certain you will find diverting. So that would be the, so to say, uh, the outsider's observation about what happens here in the legal uh, celebration. So what happens? Bonfires, bonfires, lots of festivities. So as you can see in the picture, yeah, men wear typically wreaths made of oak leaves. Yeah? So they sing songs, participate in different uh, games. Yeah? So, and again, the same writer, Observing all this uh, um, uh, celebration, uh, noted down that they chanted the word Ligua over and over again in such varied notes and intonations that it made me feel quite uncanny again. But if you hear Ligua, Ligua, so welcome to uh, midsummer festivities in Latvia, one of the uh, mo uh, most favorite uh, holidays um, uh, in this country. So uh, the next word, <clears throat> the next word, 
a next letter, which I find uh, very important. The letter, well, it seems L, but it has a small diacritical mark. So it is L. So we pronounce it as L. We have the word Lautius. So we would need probably some kind of four elements in English to approximately express what the word Lautius means. So that means to go with the flow. And this is, I would say, a kind of a Latvian uh, way of their own mindfulness. So if you lau yes, if you go with the flow in the Latvian way, you have the Latvian kind of mindfulness. What does it mean? Yeah? So particularly when we have holidays, when we are enjoying our summers, yeah? so we go with the flow. We lau yamies, lau yamies, we lau yamies, we go with the flow. So uh, because uh, for instance, when we uh, want to swim fish or, or go boating, yeah, uh, this word lautius is closely also related to the uh, metaphorical meaning of uh, waters, yeah? because water is, as it's written in this slide, the perfect metaphor for going with the flow. So, uh, letter number four, which is very important, it is Nyamix. You see N and kind of a coma underneath. So we pronounce it as Nya, Nya, yeah, soft Nya, palatal N, Nyamix. So Nyamix, uh, probably a more common word would be Garts, Garshix. So in English, it's yummy, delicious. So Latvians love good food. Latvians do love good food. They love a huge diversity of food. Yeah? But we would divide our food into the traditional food and national food. Yeah? So if you are visiting typically cafes, restaurants, you would get quite, uh, I would say, an international European cuisine. But we also have uh, our uh, national cuisine and uh, here you can for example see uh, carrot pies yeah and they are really yummyx in Ventspils if you know the right place where to get them yeah so uh, right so that's uh, about these uh, four uh, letters so but also I would like to focus a little bit <clears throat> on some basic survival very basic survival Latvian. So on the left side, we have a very formal way of short interaction. And on the right side, we have a, a very informal way of interacting with each other. So if you don't know people so very well, so you would use what's written here on the left side. So let me read it out and explain what's written here. So maybe you already know the first word, labdian. Labdien, good afternoon. Labdien, ka jums klājas, ka jums klājas. How are you? And the answer would be, labdien, paldies, labi. Good afternoon, thank you, good. Uh, what's your name? That's ka jūs sauc, ka jūs sauc. What's your name? Mani sauc Guntars. My name is Guntars. Mani sauts. Noa kurienes jūs esat. Noa kurienes jūs esat. Where are you from? Es esmu no Ventspils. I am from Ventspils. Es esmu no Ventspils. Paldies par informāciju. Paldies, thank you. Par, for, informāciju, for the information. Paldies par informāciju. And if you have already friends here in Latvia, it would sound a little bit differently. You would say just ciao, but you can also say sveiks, like Italian ciao, yeah? It's like ciao, hi, sveiks, hi, uh, hi hello, kajiet, how's it going, how's it going, ciao, hi, tā neko, it's all right, it's all right, tā neko, it's all right, kā tevi sauc, what's your name, that's the same. Kā tevi sauc, Guntars, no kurienes tu esi, uh, where are you from, no Ventspils, from Ventspils, Skaidrs, ok, clear, thank you, paldies, yeah, and the three most important numbers are, 
Viens, divi, trīs. Viens, divi, trīs. We use them quite a lot. Viens, divi, trīs. Let's begin. Ja? So, viens, divi, trīs. Ja? So, uh, ok. Uh, just some more formal facts about the Latvian language. So, two genders, seven numbers, seven cases. And the alphabet of standard Latvian consists of 33 letters. And always remember, as you are trying to read, that the stress is almost, almost always on the first syllable. And uh, interestingly enough, uh, one of the longest words, well, apart from all those chemical, medical, technical terms is, I will try to read it for you. Uh, in Latvian, it sounds as which in English would mean counterclockwise direction. Yeah? So you can uh, try out pronouncing it. Well, also just for you to know, those who are particularly interested in uh, the grammatical side of the language, so uh, the free uh, version of the Latvian academic grammar in English is available online. Uh, so later on, you can um, also get the link. And currently, uh, the Latvian language can be uh, studied uh, in 20 universities, not all outside Latvia, of course, in Latvia as well, yeah, but uh, in, in about 20 universities outside Latvia in EU countries, the USA, Australia, and also as far as China yeah, and in, in, in other regions uh, of uh, the world. Yeah? So, uh, and now, uh, so uh, after some linguistic um, excursion into Latvian, so we will listen to one uh, Latvian song and perhaps we will recognize some of the words. I have actually already underlined these words. Yeah? So we know that the best way to learn new languages is try to use the lyrics of the song and listen to songs. Yeah? So here we have the word prūšu, which means Prussian, it's the genitive case, prūšu. Yeah? You already have heard the word kurzeme, that's the region in Latvia where Ventspils is, kurzeme, in the locative case, kurzeme. Yeah? And um, yeah, so I will explain this one after the song. Yeah, so let's listen it, uh, to a short song. In the locative case, Kurzeme. And yeah, so I will explain this one after the song. Yeah, so let's listen to a short song. This is Yeah. 
Okay, uh, just um, right. Yeah, so uh, I did underline some of the words you know, which we might recognize. So other ones are the ones we would have to learn in addition. Uh, yeah, so uh, I wanted to highlight here another feature. You see, I have underlined part of the word. Yeah, um, we pronounce this as Liga Vinyas, yeah, or Liga Vinya. So uh, there are very many uh, diminutive forms, the forms of endearment, endearment in Latvian. So actually, everything in Latvian can be dear. So you can say uh, Masa which means sister, you can say Masinya, my dear sister, in one word. You can say Ligava, which means a bride, bride, but you can say my dear bride. Yeah? So this is uh, also another feature um, of Latvian, and we use uh, it quite extensively. So um, let's move on. Yeah, so as, as um, we already have noticed uh, that Latvians love to sing, and singing usually culminates in numerous events and festivals. So in 2018, uh, uh, more than 10,000, I would not be mistaken to say, even 20,000 singers got together and sang in unison at the Song and Dance Festival. And it's an interesting fact that Latvia or has uh, about 1.2 million folk songs. So there is this never ceasing tradition to sing along with other musical styles, country, pop, rock, etc., whichever we wish. Yeah? Uh, right. Yeah? So then um, uh, also just very briefly to say that, yes, we speak about standard Latvian, but different parts of Latvia also use different dialects and subdialects. And Ventspils is uh, in uh, the region where uh, we uh, hear a very peculiar dialect and subdialect. And this is called the Livonian dialect, which was strongly influenced by the you know, you Greek uh, Livonian language. Yeah? Uh, I will explain that a little bit later. Yeah? So we have the middle dialect and uh, standard Latvian is based on middle dialect. And then we have high Latvian dialect. That is the dialect which is spoken in the eastern part of Latvia. But um, this one is very interesting because it has this, uh, uh, you know, you Greek influence um, uh, upon the Latvian language. And, this, uh, and standard Latvian has uh, borrowed also many words from this uh, particular dialect. Yeah? So uh, in that region, yeah, in that region where the dialect is uh, spoken, uh, we had the uh, a very also peculiar or uh, autochthonous indigenous group of population uh, called the leaves. The leaves. Yeah. Uh, now they have been practically fully assimilated uh, by uh, Latvians. Yeah. But it was a very peculiar uh, uh, culture, and uh, they had their own language, uh, which could be better understood by uh, Estonians, the Finnish people, rather than by Latvians. Yeah? And they have their also own flag, and they resided just uh, north uh, of uh, Ventspils, yeah? or in, in, in uh, northern uh, Kurzem Peninsula. Yeah? So, uh, and here you can see uh, the, le uh, the leaves, or, or uh, the ones who uh, cultivate the culture of the leaves in the national uh, costumes. Yeah? So they have their own flag, but as you can see, just if you compare um, uh, on the left side, we have Latvian, and on the right side, we have uh, the words, expressions in the leave language. I personally don't know it and cannot speak it, yeah? but uh, uh, so you can just compare. We had uh, previously the word sveiks, yeah, yeah, in 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 uh, 
the Livonian uh, language uh, spoken by the Libs. Yeah? So interestingly enough, uh, so this language is kind of being revived now in Latvia again. Yeah? So you can study it uh, in, uh, in several uh, uh, universities. We have uh, very uh, di uh, different also centers that um, cherish this culture and language. So and uh, publish uh, materials uh, for uh, next generations. Yeah? Uh, so, uh, yes, uh, continuing with the songs, yeah, so uh, summer abounds in uh, festivals. Yeah? Of course, um, due to the global pandemic, we had to calm down a little bit, and, uh, uh, but, but, but still, yeah, so uh, summer typically is also a festival time. We have many, many different kinds of festivals for different uh, kinds of musical tastes, yeah? So uh, uh, just you have to follow uh, the news on the sites, yeah, to choose the most appropriate one uh, for you, yeah? Uh, okay, uh, then um, very briefly about the economy so that we understand that uh, Latvia also contributes something to economy uh, in the world, uh, in Europe. Yeah? Uh, it's not certainly um, uh, a major global economic player, but yeah, so you can see uh, 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 who the main trade partners uh, are um in terms of imports and exports you know? and um, so uh, uh yeah so uh, principal goods in exports uh, comprise electrical machinery <coughs> mechanical appliances sawn wood pharmaceutical products wheat wood apparel articles of iron and steel you know? and uh, so here you see the antenna yeah so that is um, uh, the antenna of Ventspils International Radio Astronomy Center. It is also part of uh, the scientific and uh, economic community of Latvia because uh, it implements high quality research uh, services in the field of space technology and signal processing. Uh, but um, uh, in Latvia also, uh, we have more and more startups, more and more startups as a result of uh, technological uh, trends and trends in digitalization. Yeah? So uh, just to name a few, uh, even tech that is a startup that works on high accuracy, timing technology, mission space offering accurate predictive weather forecasts, uh, the startup 2AM that manufactures lightweight, high strength materials. Um, uh, then uh, uh, cryogenic and vacuum systems. Uh, that's the startup that addresses questions from thermal uh, dynamics in cryogenic situations and other. So here you see a microphone, yeah, the manufacturer like uh, JZ yeah, microphones has been in operations since 2007. So uh, JZ microphones is interesting because it has its own, pro pro I would say, proprietary um, capsule technology and uh, here golden droplets uh, are applied to capsules with uh, tweezers uh, as a result so the microphone uh, vibrates more easily and among its um, major customers are for example such groups as Metallica, Rammstein, Pink, Lady Gaga, Bono, U2, and so on. Yeah, but there are of course many, many other companies. Yeah, so I just wanted to show that uh, apart from uh, forests, rivers, uh, tourism. Yeah, we also have um, uh, some uh, uh, extra things uh, as well. Yeah? So. Um, Going back to Ventspils, yeah. So Ventspils, you see letter V uh, uh, in the western part of Latvia. Yeah, it's in the region of Kurzeme. So you see the coastline is it's very very long. Yeah, um, and uh, 
Uh, so some words about van spills, yeah, because from uh, Riga we move uh, to Kurzeme and uh, van spills is in Kurzeme. Yeah? So uh, what is van spills today? Yeah? So van spills today is a growing, vibrant and developing city. So very soon we are going to open, or I would rather say finish and open uh, the uh innovation and science center yeah so uh, then uh, ventspils is rich in different fountains yeah different monuments yeah and uh, people in ventspils love flowers so you can see flowers flower pots everywhere yeah people make uh, uh flower uh pictures uh, out of flowers yeah so they make flower carpets yeah uh and then uh, they compete for the best um image yeah so and um yes um having uh, said that yeah so there are uh, other places you can visit and see uh, just if you happen to be in Ventspils, and we will really welcome you if you happen to be here in the future, uh, if you visit the site visitventspils.com, so you will get plenty of plenty of uh, places uh, uh, that you can uh, visit. Yeah, here I just added uh, some, some, yeah, some of uh, the highlights. Yeah, so. Uh, Right, and of course, uh, one of the uh, one of the hubs in uh, Ventspils, it's uh, Ventspils University of Applied Sciences, and um, so this is the building uh, where we currently house uh, this uh, Olympiad, uh, and um, so uh, currently uh, it has uh, three faculties. Uh, faculty, the Faculty of uh, Information Technologies, then the Faculty of um, Economics and Management, the Faculty of uh, Languages and Translation Studies. Um, uh, then, uh, so here you can see uh, just a glimpse of, uh, catch a glimpse of some of our students. Uh, who are very active, motivated, and uh, the International Radio Astronomy uh, Center with its uh, research team and uh, the antenna. And uh, here we have uh, uh, a fountain which we uh, uh, call uh, students tears. Yeah, they remind of students tears when they have to pass the exams. Yeah. And uh, actually, there is a tradition when students defend their uh, bachelor and uh, um, master thesis. So there is um, yeah, a water pool so you can jump in. Yeah? So a um, bunch of students, yeah, after the defense, they do jump into that uh, 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 pool. Yeah? So um, then, uh, yes. Um, just uh, another uh, bird's eye view, bird's eye view on Ben's pills.
Okay, yeah. so that was uh, the city from the bird's eye view prepared by uh, the youth organization of events pills. Yeah? All right, so let's uh, move um, on. Yeah. So, um, uh, yeah, so uh, here, uh, as I said previously, we also have our own uh, local um, sub dialect. And uh, I also mentioned that it is very peculiar. Yeah? So, uh, actually, if you are uh, from Ventspils and you speak this uh, local sub-dialect, you can be recognized all over Latvia. Yeah? So what is typical about this um, uh, type of language we use here? First of all, uh, in a colloquial Latvian, we do not discriminate here between genders. Yeah? So you can see, for example, here we have the word vish, yeah? vish yeah? Uh, which in literary Latvian can be rendered into two versions, yeah? either vinch in the masculine, which means he, vinch, it's he, vish, vinya, yeah? which can mean she. Yeah, depending on the ending, yeah. So vishatrava luog, vinch atrava luog. So, uh, so it's a kind of a subdialect which avoids uh, or omits uh, various uh, suffixes and endings, yeah. Or another example, ka estenav, ka estenav, yeah. Uh, in translation, that means that I'm not here, yeah. In standard Latvian, ka estenasmu. Yeah, so you can see the difference, yeah, and, and, and here um, we will also have a, uh, a song uh, which is being sung in a local um, uh, dialect, uh, and you will see also the words, the lyrics yeah, of the song uh, in the video clip. So you can try to follow and, and at, at least recognize Vish, which means either he or she. Yeah? Uh, so you can try to follow and at least recognize Vish, which means either he or she. So.
Okay. Um, uh, so, yes, yeah, so uh, this linguistic experience is also a uh, part of uh, the trip to uh, Ventspils. Yeah? So, uh, right, just uh, again, briefly to recapture something about uh, that I mentioned about the business. Yeah? So, Ventspils is developing. Uh, uh, also because of different uh, companies which operate here. Yeah? So, uh, well, the number is, of course, changing, yeah? but it's a city of more than 2,000 companies. Yeah? So if we take uh, some uh, earlier data, yeah? so the number is shifting. The pandemic also influenced yeah? this number, but around 2,000 companies uh, operate in uh, Ventspils. Yeah? So also we have uh, this uh, Ventspils High Technology Park, yeah? which, uh, as we can read, it contributes to the economy yeah so and we develop and uh, have uh, the free internet connection fast into we have the fast internet speed also the data transmission infrastructure is quite good yeah cooperate with other countries and outsource uh, software development as well and uh, then um, yeah, so, so coming uh, closer already to an end, yeah, so uh, Benspils is organized yeah, uh, by general consent and agreement according to this principle or triad, uh, which is uh, technically uh, referred to as the triple helix of Ventspils. Yeah? So the university cooperates with the population, the municipality, and uh, also uh, businesses. Yeah? So all these th three uh, links are interrelated. Yeah? And uh, in, in that way, we try to develop our city. Okay, yeah, and, and uh, finally, also, I would like to suggest that if you happen to be in Ventspils, yeah, on the right side, yeah, so if you look at the map, so Ventspils is uh, just on, uh, as I said, on the coast of the Baltic Sea, but if you go uh, to the very tip uh, of uh, the land, so you might uh, arrive at a place which is known as Cape Kolka, or uh, in Latvian, Kolkas Raks, yeah? So that is uh, a unique place because that's where the Baltic Sea meets the Gulf of Riga. Yeah? So it has uh, also peculiar nature, beautiful sea, and it's uh, definitely worth visiting. Okay, and then at the end, so um, having uh, mentioned uh, some of these things that um, uh, are important for uh, Ventspils and Latvia. So just uh, we have a short quiz. You can think about the answers or you can uh, write them in the chat, yeah, or just think about them. And uh, so like we have some six questions. So I want to see if you remember what is the official language of Latvian. I must say these uh, questions are not difficult, yeah? uh, but still, yeah? so what is the official language of Latvia? Yeah? So we can think about it. And the right answer is, you can see it uh, vaguely also here, Latvia Shuvaluoda, so it must be Latvian, not to be confused with two other languages that begin uh, with L, Latin or Lithuanian. Um, okay, so let's move on to the next question. Where is Ventspils? So, uh, and we have two uh, options. Yeah, Ventspils is in the north and we have to choose between east and west. So if it is on the coast of the Baltic Sea, where is it? Yeah. Uh, on the coast of the, then again, yeah, uh, which one? Probably I already said the answer, yeah. So Ventspils is in the north, west of Latvia, on the coast of the Baltic Sea, yeah. Okay, so then which greeting is formal in Latvian, which is formal? Is it ciao or is it labdien? Yeah. So looks like looks like we would use labdien. Labdien. Sometimes we prolong it. Labdien. Labdien. Yeah. So among friends, very close friends, you can just say ciao. Uh, okay. Then question four. Uh, an autochthonous. Yeah. Uh, indigenous ethnic group with its distinct language, different from the Latvian language in Latvia, is so 
we have some words used here yeah the prussians the leaves the coronians well go for the middle go for the middle they should be the leaves they should be the leaves yeah? okay and then uh, question five is it true or false if you look at the map of europe latvia is not the smallest country in size in europe true or false so latvia is not it's true it's not the smallest country in size in europe yeah? so uh and finally uh so uh Mens will set a new guinness world record by planting most snowdrops by most people simultaneously when which was the year that was mentioned and so remember it was the 100th anniversary of uh, uh, latvia and so it should be 2017 okay uh and what can whisper in latvian of course uh, we know people can whisper what else can whisper what else can whisper so we have different options like forests people flowers amber time each whisper differently well here the right answer would be all of them all of them all of them yeah. Okay, and then thank you uh, today, all of you, for um, your attention. Uh, and I wish you really a very good luck in the competition. In Latvian, that would sound all this. Labu veiks me olimpiade. And go for the cup, the medal, number one. So thank you, all this. One. So thank you, Aldeus.